Welcome to our lecture online. Well, if you thought that the JE Advanced Questions in Physics couldn't get any crazier, here's another example where I don't know where to get these from, but they're quite intricate and quite complicated to try and figure out how to do, let alone get those correct, and all in just a limited amount of time of a few minutes. Well, let's read the problem. It's going to take at least three minutes to read the problem and read all the possible answers before we can even begin to solve this problem. It does deal with surface tension in a bubble and thermodynamics. Although the surface tension may not be key to this problem, it does do some and it does add some additional complexity. It says here that we have a bubble with a surface tension equal to S. The ideal gas inside the bubble has ratio of specific heats gamma equals 5 over 3. The bubble is exposed to the atmosphere and retains its spherical shape. When P atmosphere is equal to PA1, the radius of the bubble is R1 and the temperature of the enclosed gas is T1. When P atmosphere is PA2, the radius of the and temperature are R1 and T2. Which of the following statement or statements is or are correct? So now they give us four statements and one to four may be correct. So here the first one says, if the surface of the bubble is a perfect heat insulator, so there's no heat going in or out, then they claim that R1 over R2 to the fifth power must equal PA2 plus 2S over R2 divided by PA plus 2S over R2. All right. Secondly, B, if the surface of the bubble is a perfect heat conductor, so heat can go in and out, then the total internal energy of the bubble, including its surface energy, does not change with the external atmospheric pressure. C. If the surface of the bubble is a perfect heat conductor, again heat can go in and out, and the change in atmospheric temperature is negligible, then R1 over R2 quantity cubed equals PA2 plus 4S over R2 divided by PA plus 4S over R2. And finally, D, if the surface of the bubble is a perfect heat insulator, again, no heat can go in or out, then the ratio of the temperatures, T2 to T1 to the 5 halves power, must equal PA2 plus 4S over R2 and PA plus 4S over R1. All right. So, first of all, we need to figure out how the surface tension plays in to the overall structure of this problem. If there's no surface tension, then the pressure inside the bubble must be equal to the pressure outside the bubble, which makes sense. But if there is surface tension, then the pressure inside the bubble is greater than the pressure outside the bubble by, the, by what the pressure increase is caused by the additional surface tension. So let's take a bubble. And of course, when we think of a bubble, we must make sure we think of the inside and outside surface of the bubble. So if we Imagine that we cut the bubble in two, then we can see that there's surface tension in the upper part, in the lower part, the surface tension between the bubble, like this, on the inside surface and on the outside surface. So we have it on the inside and on the outside. And that's important. So they tell us now that the bubble has surface tension S. Okay? Does that mean for both the inside and the outside? Only for the inside, only for the outside? Not quite sure. But we do know that the pressure due to the surface tension is going to be equal to the force divided by the total area over which it is, it is um, spread out. Now, I'm assuming that this is the coefficient of surface tension. They didn't specifically say that, but let's assume that it is. Then the force would be the circumference of the bubble times S times 2 because you have to take the inside and outside, and then we divide that by the area to get the pressure. So the pressure is going to be the force divided by the area over which it spreads, so the force is going to be 2 times 2 pi R for the circumference, times S divided by the area, and it would be the cross-sectional area, which is pi r squared. So in this case, the pi cancels out, 
one of the R cancels out, and so we end up with 4S over R as being the increased pressure due to the surface tension. So that's the first thing. And here we need to be careful because if we didn't take into account the inside and the outside, we would end up with 2S over R instead of 4S over R, so it does make a difference. Notice that here we have 2S over R, and here we have 4S over R and 4S over R, so that obviously does play a role in the answers. All right, that's first. Next, we go to A, and now we realize that the surface, if the surface of the bubble is a perfect heat insulator, so for part A, we can say that Q is equal to zero. No heat is exchanged, which makes it adiabatic. That means it's an adiabatic process. And in an adiabatic process, we know that P1 V1 to the gamma is equal to P2 V2 to the gamma. So now we have a relationship between the pressure and the volume, so now we can say that P1 over P2 is equal to V2 over V1 to the gamma power. Or I can turn it around, I can say V2 to V1, V2 over V1 to the uh, square, that, uh, let's see, square, yeah. Oh, wait a minute, gamma, what am I doing? Not square, this is gamma, 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 gamma. Got to be careful here, so I turn the equation around, is equal to P1 over P2. Now, of course, P1 to P2 is going to be P atmosphere um, and, of course, let's see here, the atmospheric pressure is going to change, so P1 is going to be atmospheric pressure PA1 plus the additional pressure caused by the surface tension, which is 4S over R1, and here P2 would be PA2 plus the additional pressure due to the surface tension, which is 4S over R2. And notice that will equal the ratio of V2 over V1 to the gamma power. So this is equal to uh, the volume of a sphere, of course, is 4 thirds pi R cubed. And so that would be R2 because we're dealing with V2. And to the gamma power would be 5 over 3. And we divide that by v1, which is 4 thirds pi r2, uh, r1, sorry, because it's v1, so r1 cubed to the 5 thirds power. Of course, the threes cancel out, and that means that's to the fifth power. The 4 thirds cancel out, the pi cancels out. So essentially, what we have here is we have this relationship where we have pa1 plus 4s over r1 divided by pa2 plus 4s over r2 is equal to the ratios of R2 to R1 to the fifth power. So we have R1 to R2 to the fifth power. R1 to R2, so that's this one turned around and this one turned around. So let's see here. R1 to R2, we have, I better write it out, right? So this is equal to, we have R, 2 to the fifth power divided by r1 to the fifth power like this okay is that what i have so oh i almost have this i thought i had the right answer because everything looked right except notice i have a 4s over r1 and a 4s over r2 so if we hadn't taken into account that we need to account for the surface tension on both sides of the bubble we would have said we have the perfect answer because then we would have had a 2s and a 2s and said perfect match correct answer, but because this is 2s and this is 4s, it is not the correct answer. That's kind of sneaky. Wow. So anyway, that means that uh, this is not a correct answer. But isn't that R5? R2 over R1 is R1 over R2? Well, correct, except that this is turned out over as well. See, 1 is related to 2, 2 to 1, 2 to 1, so that, so the, the order is correct as well. Everything is correct, except 2s versus the required 4s. So it's really, really, uh, they got you very close on that one. All right, let's go to part B. If the surface of the bubble is a perfect heat conductor, so now heat can go in and out, then the total internal energy of the bubble, including its surface energy, does not change with the external atmospheric pressure. Now that's kind of strange because notice when that the external atmospheric pressure changes, 
the volume of the gas inside changes and when the gas volume changes it does work and when work is done well then you can't have a chain then you cannot have the internal energy remaining constant because well we have the first law of thermodynamics that says that the uh, the change in internal energy is equal to the heat added to the gas minus the work done by the gas that's why it's minus and so if work is done and heat is exchanged you're going to have a change in total energy and so therefore I would say that B is not a correct answer all right going to part C here it says if the surface of the bubble is a perfect heat conductor so now heat is going in and out and the change in atmospheric temperature is negligible then we're supposed to have this relationship okay so now since heat is exchanged is no longer an adiabatic process so now we have to work with the equation PV equals nRT but if T is virtually constant they say it, the change is negligible and there's heat exchange so that the temperatures will remain the same inside and outside that means temperature is constant R is a constant the number of moles of gas inside the bubble is constant so that means that P1V1 must equal P2V2 in other words so this is for part C so in other words P1 over P2 is equal to V2 over V1 now pressure 1 pressure 2 is again the same as before right we're going to get this relationship again for the pressure so we can say that pressure of A1 plus the additional pressure caused by the surface tension 4S over R1 divided by PA2 the change in atmospheric pressure plus, plus the additional pressure caused by the surface tension R2 like this equals the ratio of the volumes okay and the volume is going to be 4 thirds pi R2 cubed divided by 4 thirds pi r1 cubed and of course the 4 thirds cancel the pi cancels and so we have the ratio of the radius or the radii cubed should equal this quantity right here so let's see if we have that over here notice we have the ratio of the radii cubed r1 over r2 we have it in reverse but that's okay equals pa2 over pa1 and so we have that in reverse as well and look that is a perfect match with what we have over there so that means that answer C is indeed correct wow one more to go but now let's go to part D and in part D notice that if the surface of the bubble is a perfect heat conduct oh wait 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 we're right here D if the surface of the bubble is a perfect heat insulator ah now we have Q equals zero again no heat exchange which means it's again an adiabatic process then they claim that the ratios of the temperature to the 5 half power equals the ratio of the pressures hmm so now we need to have that relationship between pressure and temperature and notice for an adiabatic process that is P1 T1 to the gamma minus 1 equals P2 T2 to the gamma minus 1 and that means that T1 so with right here so we're going to put T2 on the other side so we have P1 over P2 is equal to T2 to the gamma minus 1 over T1 to the gamma minus 1 now of course gamma is 5 over 3 subtract 3 over 3 from that so we have 2 over 3 so this would be equal to T2 over T1 to the 5 5 thirds minus 3 thirds or 2 thirds hmm hmm that's disappointing doesn't look like it's going to be the same but maybe no maybe yes let's see here let's, does that make sense 5 over 2 5 over 3 no so I don't have a match on the temperature now the pressures is going to be the same again as this right we're going to have uh, uh, PA1 plus 4s over r1 and pa2 so the ratio here would be the same but we don't get this we get this instead so there's no match here so I would say that answer D is also not correct we don't need to go any further 
And so now we have concluded that out of the four possible answers, only one, C, is the one that gives you a perfect match under the conditions given. And that is how it's done.